Okay, so first, what rigging is in general. So the definition that I kind of came up with is that it's a process of setting up a character, providing an animator with a control over its movement. So to understand that properly, let's talk about what parts of the pipeline do we know? So what, what parts of the pipeline in relation to character can you think of? But the thing that we want to remember is that ringing kind of falls in between modeling and animation. And that's important to note because as riggers, you will be working closely with both of those departments. So you'll be working a lot with modelers, asking them for changes and kind of collaborating with them to have the model suited best for rigging. And also, but also remembering that what we're really doing as riggers is serving animators with our work. So we want to make sure that the animation department is happy, that they have all the functionality they need to create the movement that they need to. Now, in different productions, rigging is a bit different. So we can think of feature animation, visual effects, games, and then other mediums. I included here the project that I worked on and animation will be so rigging will be different in those in those industries as we as we especially dive deeper into different features so when we look at a feature animation it tries to mimic kind of the look of 2d animation which means that oftentimes an animator will need the kind of control that is not necessarily realistic but that would be expected from an animator in 2D. So, and rigs, we need to create rigs that kind of mimic a lot of those unrealistic uh, movements. So this is an example of some Warner Brothers rigs uh, from their uh, Looney Tunes uh, shorts. So in this case, they focused a lot on making, let's say the Roadrunner rig be able to stretch nicely. And for, uh, they even included some motion blur effects that is that the animator can control for for this coyote rig now in visual effects the challenges are completely different because in visual effects we want to make sure that our character is realistic we need to focus on how exactly the character deforms of what muscles move when the character moves and and so on so for visual effects, it's very important to look at the anatomy of the character. And even if the character is, is not real, doesn't exist in real life, we still want to simulate their anatomy from the anatomy of the animals uh, that we know. And then if in games, the difference between games and kind of both visual effects and feature animation, it's kind of getting blurred more and more every year as the, as the hardware gets better. Because with rigging for video games, the most important thing is performance. But what that means, again, every year that changes and we, we can use different, and, and the rigs change. So for instance, let's say 10 years ago, when, when I started, you couldn't have say multiple fingers for characters in video games because that was just too heavy it was too many joints and you, you couldn't have blend shapes now the engines uh, that you can find such as unreal and unity they'll accept blend shapes so we can use let's say blend shapes for character rigging there's also less constraints for the number of joints and things like that but we still have to render in real time and that still carries some performance concerns uh, with it and some optimization that we should think of when we're when we are rigging and so one example is that we we will often have to create multiple rigs depending on the level of detail for the character so if the character is closer to the character they will have a higher level of detail and so their rig and animation will be more complex the further they are from the character of, sorry, from the camera, both their model 
will will have less resolution, but also the rig will become more simpler and the animation to, with it. Okay, so for other mediums, I picked just the two that I worked on, which is step motion and uh, again, robotics. And just because the set of challenges there is so much different from any other fields. So with step motion, the way it works is, and this is how they're doing it at Leica and at Ardman, uh, they use the same process. So the idea is that the face is being modeled and rigged in Maya, but then it's being 3D printed on a printer and used in animation as a physical as a physical asset. And then you, those faces are being replaced on the character. And it's cool because you can like actually touch the faces that, that you rig. All right, then in robotics, so the project I worked on is like this little robot that can play games with you and, and such. And so the idea there is that the animation of it would happen in Maya, and then we would export that animation on a physical thing. So this is kind of a good example to see that you're not constricted just to rigging inside, inside the screen. There are lots of applications outside of it too. And of course, with this kind of real world rigging, new challenges uh, uh, come, uh, come with it. For instance, the amount that the robot moves is different on different surfaces. So all those things uh, had to be taken into account. Then uh, one thing that we can do as uh, riggers and one thing that can be useful while we're learning is to analyze rigs that already exist. Uh, so you can uh, try playing around with them, see how they're structured. Anim School's rig is Malcolm. That's like the official Anim School rig. It's even available for free. And of course, it's available to all of you taken, taking the class. So you can go to their uh, materials page or rather to their character sets and props page and download it from there. And then you can kind of try it out try posing it, uh, try seeing how uh, one of the ways in which a rig can look like. 